It would mean that there is a smarter kid on our cosmic block and it will fill us with a sense of cosmic modesty that we very much deserve. There are moments when the universe taps you on the shoulder and says, remember that thing you thought you lost forever? It's the cosmic equivalent of finding a key to a lock you've never seen, a key that just fell out of the sky. Seven years ago, the interstellar object known as Oumuamua did just that. It wasn't a gentle flyby. It was a high-speed strafing run, a bullet from an unknown gun that ripped through our solar system and vanished before we could even snap a decent picture. For years, it was a ghost story scientists told each other. Tonight, that ghost story just became a true story. The James Webb Space Telescope, our golden eye in the dark, just handed us the photograph we've been dreaming of. And the truth is, it doesn't look like any rock we've ever seen before. It looks like something else. Here's what happened, why every other telescope on Earth missed it, and why this single, haunting image is already splitting the astronomical community into two camps. On one side, you have those who believe we are looking at the single weirdest natural object imaginable, a one in a trillion cosmic fluke. And on the other, you have those who are quietly and very seriously updating their alien probe priors. The debate is no longer theoretical. We have the picture and it is demanding an explanation. Let's rewind the tape to October, 2017. The PanSTARRS telescope in Hawaii catches a faint speck of light screaming through the dark. When astronomers calculated its trajectory, they realized it wasn't one of ours. It came from outside, from the direction of the star Vega, on a path that was unbound by our sun's gravity. It was a tourist, and it wasn't staying. We had two weeks, just two, before it slipped back into the infinite black. Every observatory on the planet scrambled, but trying to get a picture of Oumuamua was like trying to photograph a specific black grain of sand on a mile-long beach at midnight from 100 miles away. At 27th magnitude, it was fainter than Pluto's tiniest moons. By the time Hubble and Spitzer got their turn, Oumuamua had already dimmed into a ghost. All we had were scraps of data, a reddish color, no signs of water, no dusty coma like a comet. And then there was the kicker. The thing that kept astronomers up at night. A tiny, inexplicable push. Every single day, something was adding 0.00025 meters per second squared to its velocity. Imagine rolling a bowling ball down a perfectly flat, frictionless lane. It should travel at a constant speed forever. Now imagine that ball slowly but measurably starts speeding up. That was Oumuamua. Some unseen force was giving it a nudge, and gravity wasn't it. That non-gravitational kick? That was the mystery our careers were waiting for. So if it was impossible to see then, how did we see it now? Most headlines miss this part. Webb didn't just turn and shoot. The telescope sits 1.5 million kilometers from Earth at a stable point called L2. Oumuamua, by now, is farther away than Neptune, deep in the frozen abyss of space. Catching it directly would be impossible. So how'd we do it? Pure, unadulterated cosmic luck, combined with a genius observation plan. A distant galaxy cluster, a colossal city of stars, happened to line up perfectly between us and Oumuamua's current path. This cluster is so massive that it warps the fabric of space-time around it acting like a natural magnifying glass. This phenomenon, called gravitational lensing, is like looking through the curved base of a wine glass. It bends and focuses light from whatever's behind it. For exactly 42 precious minutes, this cosmic lens drifted into place, boosting the faint infrared signal from Oumuamua by a staggering 22-fold. The team pointed Webb's near-infrared spectrograph, or N-I-R-S-P-E-C, at that exact patch of sky, and just stared, soaking up every possible photon at wavelengths between 2.5 and 5 microns. When JPL's brand new quantum AI denoising pipeline 
stacked that single, long exposure frame, filtering out the noise of the universe, the razor-sharp silhouette you're seeing popped out. The ghost had finally been captured on film. The first surprise was the shape. Forget the cigar artists imagined. What we're looking at is a staggering 400 meters long, yet only 35 meters thick. To put that in perspective, think of two city blocks welded end to end, then squashed down into the thickness of a cosmic credit card. It's a blade, not a rock. Then you see the edges. They are unnervingly straight, meeting at a crisp, clean 93 degree angle. Nature doesn't do that. Nature loves curves, fractures, and jagged messes. It's like finding a perfectly milled piece of machinery in the middle of a wild, untouched forest. It screams of artificiality. There are no craters, no boulders, none of the lumps and bumps you'd expect on an object that has been traveling through interstellar space for millions of years. Colder than liquid nitrogen. But the weird part isn't how cold it is. It's how evenly cold it is. A natural rock warmed by its passage through our solar system would have warmer spots and colder spots, like a potato fresh from the oven. This object has one steady temperature across its entire surface, as if it has an internal system for thermal regulation. And then there's the spectrum, the chemical fingerprint. It's a near-perfect blackbody curve, meaning it absorbs almost all light that hits it. But there are two tiny, sharp absorption notches at 3.4 and 6.7 microns. These notches are like a barcode. Lab techs at NASA ran that barcode against every known meteorite and asteroid sample. No match. They did, however, find a match in one of our own materials science labs. The spectral fingerprint is a dead ringer for lab-grown boron nitride metamaterials, the kind of stuff we are just now figuring out how to manufacture at scale for next-generation spacecraft. So, could this still be natural? Is there any way to explain this away? Maybe. Science demands we try. The leading natural theory was that Oumuamua is a shattered nitrogen ice plate, a thin shard blown off a Pluto-like world in another solar system. In theory, a piece of nitrogen ice at 50 Kelvin would be rigid and could be thin. That's like a piece of an iceberg breaking off. But the theory runs into huge problems when faced with this picture. When icebergs break, they create random, jagged edges. They don't carve themselves into perfect right angles. And even if you could explain the shape, you are stuck with the material. Unless the parent planet had a bizarre crust made of exotic ceramics, you can't explain the boron nitride fingerprints. It's a compelling idea, but the evidence just doesn't support it. The naturalist explanation is looking less like a theory and more like wishful thinking. Enter Avi Loeb of Harvard University. Yes, that Avi Loeb. The man who has been arguing for years that we should take the possibility of extraterrestrial technology seriously. This morning, he dropped a 38-page preprint paper online, and it argues that the shape, the spectrum, and the acceleration curve fit a light sail model with a statistical significance better than one in 10,000. His math is shockingly persuasive. A sail about half a millimeter thick, coated in boron nitride for heat tolerance and durability, with an area to mass ratio perfectly tuned to catch the pressure of sunlight. A light sail is like a boat, but instead of wind in its sails, it's pushed by the gentle, constant stream of photons from a star. That tiny, mysterious 0.00025 meters per second squared push? According to Loeb's math, that's exactly the acceleration you'd get from solar radiation pressure, acting on a sail of this size and mass. And the model solves another mystery why we never saw a bright flare from it. If a giant mirror is facing you, it's blindingly bright. But if that same mirror is turned edge on, you might not even notice it. Loeb's model proposes, Oumuamua passed us edge on the entire time, which is why it was so dim. 
the model is neat, tidy, and, right now, terrifyingly consistent with the pixels we are all staring at. Last night, in a mission control room at JPL, an engineer was overheard whispering, if that thing ever unfurls, we're looking at a 400 meter solar sail aimed back into the galaxy. Half the room laughed nervously. The other half opened up their Delta V spreadsheets. The paradigm has shifted. This is no longer an academic debate. It's a practical one. The uncomfortable truth is this. Oumuamua isn't coming back, but the factory that built it might have sent more. We found this one by sheer luck. But next year, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, LSST, comes online, promising to detect one new interstellar visitor per month. We're about to go from a trickle of information to a fire hose. If even one of those new visitors shows the same spectral fingerprint, the natural explanation starts to sound like a dangerous delusion. We may be looking at a galactic survey in progress. The response has been immediate. NASA has already yanked discretionary time on web for a second round of observations, hoping to catch it again. Europe's extremely large telescope, the ELT, will attempt to bounce a laser off its surface next month to get a precise range and rotation. Meanwhile, two private groups, spin-offs of the Breakthrough Starshot Initiative, are pitching a mission called Project Lyra Light. It's a 12-year solar electric sprint to intercept the next Oumuamua-like object that comes through, getting up close at a distance of 200 astronomical units. The price tag is roughly that of a new NFL stadium, a bargain for what might be the ultimate existential insurance policy. It's humanity deciding to chase the mystery rather than waiting for the mystery to come to us. This story unfolds. Hit subscribe and ring that bell. Next week, I'm breaking down the first budget numbers for that intercept mission, and we'll see if Congress thinks alien reconnaissance is worth the price of a sports arena. Seven years ago, Oumuamua was a rumor, a whisper in the data. Tonight, it's a photograph, thin as a razor, colder than death, accelerating under the gentle pressure of sunlight, as if it still has its engines on. Whether it's the universe's strangest iceberg or a calling card from a civilization with far better material science than our own, one truth remains. The next visitor is already on its way. And for the very first time, our telescopes are finally good enough to stop, stare, and say hello.